Madam Minister, uh, near the beginning of your opening statement, uh, you said, quote, we have closed the cases of 83% of employees in the backlog. Uh, later on in your statement, you said, quote, our backlog is almost 80% eliminated, end quote. So what proportion of the backlog has been cleared up? Is it 83% or is it less than 80%? It's 83%. Okay, so, so the, the almost 80% was perhaps an error in the, in the remarks? It's 83%. Okay, uh, thank you. So 83% is clearly less than, than 100%. Uh, last time you appeared before this committee, I asked whether uh, the government was on track uh, to meet its stated deadline of October 31st. Mm -hmm. uh, that date has uh, come and gone. Uh, we still have uh, 15,000 uh, employees remaining uh, in the backlog. I'm wondering if you can tell the committee uh, when those cases will finally be resolved. There was no one more disappointed than uh, those of us who are working at PSPC in terms of, of not meeting the October 31st deadline. Uh, clearly, we had hoped that we would get them all resolved by October 31st. Uh, as I've said, the, uh, a lot of those cases go back three years. Uh, so in terms of, it's predated Phoenix, so they are complicated cases. Uh, in terms of, of when we will get them cleared up, we are going to get them cleared up as soon as we possibly can. That's why we have put a dedicated team uh, to work just on those 15,000, because we need to get those resolved as quickly as possible. Okay, I would also like to touch on the issue of employees who will have incorrect figures on their T4 income tax forms. Uh, your answer to this issue used to be that it would all be wrapped up before the end of the calendar year. It doesn't sound like that's the case. Your answer today seemed to be that employees could go to the Canada Revenue Agency's website or call the toll-free number. Is that really the extent of the government's plan uh, to deal with this uh, challenge of incorrect information on tax forms? We're going to uh, make available whoever we have to, to respond to any concerns that employees have. So whether we do that through uh, Canada Revenue Agency or whether we do that through PSPC, uh, clearly if an employee thinks there's a error on their T4, they need to get in touch with PSPC and we will work with them to find out if in fact there is. Uh, okay, but it's not just a matter of employee concerns. I mean, if, if and the employee actually hasn't been paid the correct amount by the end of the year, then the number on the T4 is going to be wrong. Well, that's why we, we've, we're encouraging employees to get in touch with us. That's why we have made available the call center. We have the, the website there. We have lines that they can call. It's really important that they reach out to us if they think they're, they're having an issue or if they've been overpaid and they're concerned about their T4. We are going to make every effort we possibly can to make sure that it, if there's an issue with their T4 that it's corrected. Okay. I'd like to ask a little bit about the costs of responding to this Phoenix uh, boondoggle. Uh, in the supplementary estimates, we have uh, almost $50 million to pay for supplementary pay centers, uh, but you've also mentioned that the government is going to have to compensate employees who incurred interest charges and penalties by missing payments as a result of not receiving the money that they've earned. Do you have any sense of how much that compensation is going to cost? The $50 million is a number we're working with at this point in time. Um, you know, whether or not there will be additional costs remains to be seen, but this, at this point, with what we're working and what we're asking for, and as I spelled out what that $50 million will be used for, um, that's the number that we're working with. Um, with this file, you know, if there are additional costs, then we'll have to deal with that, but at this point in time, $50 million is the number. Okay, at a previous meeting, we were told quite explicitly by your officials that the $50 million did not include the compensation of employees. So are you now suggesting you. that $50 million mm -hmm. encompasses the employee compensation as well as the pay centers? Oh, no. Are you talking about the claims unit? That's a part that's separate from uh, the money that's being spent by PSPC. Uh, so I, the I money agree, but I'm asking how, how much it's going to be. Do we have enough? Yeah, there, I'm just trying to get a handle on sure. the total cost of uh, resolving the problem. Yeah, and we don't have a number on that at this point in time. Okay. Uh, well, then I, I guess I would ask, even if Phoenix uh, seemed like the right solution uh, at the time, 
Uh, knowing what you know now, would you acknowledge that it was a mistake to rush ahead with the implementation? Clearly, the payroll system that existed for the Government of Canada needed to be replaced. Um, I think the issue, as I mentioned earlier, uh, came from trying to achieve savings at the expense of employees. So with, with Phoenix, it was a system that the previous government decided was the payroll system we should go with. Uh, but the reality is, is that when you remove compensation advisors who were familiar with everything to do with payroll, with government payroll, that became an issue. Uh, sure, in so terms of the actual rollout, uh, I was told that uh, all, of the inf all of the information that needed had been uh, looked at, that they, they were ready to go, that we had nothing to be concerned about. Uh, I think as, as and February seemed to be, as the rollout happened, people seemed to be uh, satisfied that it was working well, then April, and I think it was well, with no, the I second. I think there were all sorts of problems reported in, in February, and I think your government went ahead with phase two of Phoenix, even though there were a lot of known problems but with I, phase one. But I do want to go back to your point about the importance of experienced pay advisors, and I wonder, was it a mistake to locate the main center uh, in Miramichi, given that n none of the people that had expertise on federal payrolls were located there? I don't think it was um, the wrong decision. I think it was important. Uh, as I always say, it's important to look at making sure that we have federal employees outside of the outside of the, the uh, Ottawa, if there's an opportunity in other parts of the country to, to have federal employees, I think that's important. Um, I think the training, um, if sufficient training had been done, we would not be having an issue today. If compensation advisors had been kept on uh, in Ottawa to support the system uh, or the Miramichi Centre, we would not be experiencing what we're experiencing today. So locating the centre in Miramichi was not a mistake. The mistake was removing the compensation advisors who could support the employees that were in the Miramichi Centre. Thank you, Center. Minister. Thank you very Our much. Our final intervention will be Mr. Weir for three minutes, please. Thank you. Uh, Madam Minister, uh, experienced uh, pay experts were laid off in many cases because they did not want to relocate to Miramichi. So how can you say that it was a mistake to lay off experienced pay experts, but that it was not a mistake to relocate the pay centre to Miramichi? I think it was a mistake to lay them off because I think they would have been invaluable in assisting um, the employees that were hired at Miramichi. Um, you know, there were in, some of them took retirement, others went on to other jobs in the public service. Um, I don't, if you're going to look so, at... So you're, you're, you're saying though to, that, that the, their workplace should have been maintained in the national capital region rather than trying to locate everything to Miramichi? Uh, what I'm saying is that it wasn't wrong to uh, locate the pay center in Miramichi any more than it was wrong to locate the pension center in Shediac in New Brunswick. But the reality is, is that you know, if you're if you're going to put in place a more uh, advanced payroll system, uh, there is a reality there that you should be able to um, make in, in realize savings. So whether or not it, the the necessity of laying them off should have, um, you know, would have been today or tomorrow or next week. But the reality is, is that we needed that expert advice, I think, uh, to enable us to realize on the vision that the previous government had when it said we needed to replace the payroll system. If you had seen the Gartner report in January, would you have delayed the implementation of Phoenix? From what I'm told in terms of the Gardner report, that in fact we had dealt with the issues that had been raised in the Gardner report. Okay, it doesn't, doesn't uh, seem so. Well, I'm told we had, and uh, that in fact both SI and uh, all the work that had been done up to that point uh, did not suggest in any way, shape or form that we should not proceed. Okay, in the $50 million that we talked about, about $6 million is going uh, to IBM for additional uh, monitoring. Uh, I guess I'm wondering, IBM designed the Phoenix system, what kind of responsibility uh, does it bear and at some point shouldn't it be reimbursing the Government of Canada? We've been working very closely with IBM. What they're being asked to do now is, uh, is outside the initial contract. 
So no, no, it's, it's additional terms, work. In terms of the additional contract, what kind of requirements were there uh, on IBM? What kind of recourse do Canadian taxpayers have for this product that clearly didn't work and, and wasn't tested very effectively? Well, and I think it's... I think it's fair to say that uh, Phoenix as a system, um, that while there are issues, I think th with any um, system, you're going to find um, things that you're going to have to deal with and try and, and um, find a way to, uh, to better a system. And we're doing that, working very closely with IBM. But no system is perfect. And I think the employees um, you know, recognize that they're working uh, closely with a system that, like anything else, they, they make recommendations on how to do things better. Um, are we we'll have going to, to seek any sorry, compensation from IBM? Mr. Weir, I'm sorry, we're a little over time now. I was going to have to interrupt the minister in any event. We'll have to cut it off there.